As ham radio operators, we make many measurements. We measure power, signal strength, voltage, current. But above all, we measure VSWR. But sometimes when we're measuring it, we're puzzled. We think, that can't be right. Welcome to the Waters and Stanton Ham Radio Channel, presented by Peter Waters. When I add radials to my vertical antenna, the VSWR rises. That cannot be right. Well, yes, it can make sense. Let me explain. A vertical antenna has got a low impedance, around about 20, 25 ohms. We'll call it 20 ohms. And that means to say that it's not a very good match to 50 ohm coax cable. It'll give a VSWR of about 1.5, 1.6, something like that. Depends on the actual impedance. But in series with that feed is the earth loss. The earth loss, because vertical is two, you've got two poles. You've got the vertical radiator and you've got the earth. The earth is really like the other side of a dipole. That earth has got resistance. So when you're feeding your vertical, you're not only feeding it with a, an impedance of 20 ohms, you're also feeding it with an impedance which relates to the earth resistance. Now, if you put just a single copper pipe into the ground and use that as the earth, that presents a fairly high resistance. And that resistance will actually bring the feed point up to around about 50 ohms, give or take. That means to say that you'll apparently get a good match. Now, if you add a radial system to your antenna, in other words, you add a number of wires, say you add about 10 um, radials, about three or four meters, whatever the length is, it's not super critical, but you add radials and lay them on the ground that actually lowers the earth resistance. So it reduces the resistance in series with the feed. So instead of having a 50 ohm feed, which is your 20 ohms plus, say for example, your 30 ohm earth resistance, you've got 20 ohms plus, say, 15 ohms. So in actual fact, your apparent feed impedance has gone down. Therefore, your VSWR rises, but the good news is that the antenna is more efficient. It radiates more power. So it's one of those anomalies where the VSWR rises, but the efficiency of the antenna goes up because you're losing less power in the Earth. My antenna tuner struggles on some bands to achieve a match. Now, I was told to try making the coaxial feeder longer to correct this. That does not make sense to me. Well, I agree. It doesn't actually make sense, does it? But it happens to be true. Let me explain. The reactance that's present at the end of the coax cable when you connect it to your transceiver varies depending on the length of the coax cable and the frequency. Very often, you can have a length of coax cable which presents a reactance component that the antenna matching unit in your transceiver struggles with. Very often, extending the coax cable, making it longer, will actually create a reactance that the matching unit can cope with. And as a rough rule of thumb, if you've got a problem, try adding about an eighth of a wavelength of coax cable to the feeder. Um, if it means just laying it on the floor, coiling it up in the, in the shack, well, that's fine. Sometimes that cures the problem. We learned that many years ago. I agree, it doesn't make sense. But the good news is, it often works. I am tearing my hair out over this problem. I have been messing about with my HF mobile antenna. I use a magnetic mount. But it is very fussy where I place that magnetic mount and even moving the cable changes the VSWR. It is so frustrating. Yes, tearing your hair out. Gosh, I've done a bit of that. You know, when you're messing about with uh, mobile antennas, particularly with a magnetic mount, you do get some strange results. You get some VSWRs that you didn't expect, and uh, then you mess about with the antenna, you go back and it's all changed. Well, the reason for that really is the fact that um, with a magnetic mount, you can get some strange results, and it's all to do with the fact that you've got RF flowing through the roof or the... Um, hatchback of the vehicle, you've got an RF flowing down the coax as a separate path, and the two sort of interact. 
And the way to actually cure this is to use a ferrite core, the good old ferrite core. I use the 240 um, FX43 mix, and uh, that seems to solve the problem. Usually, put in the, the ferrite core, or the line isolator as it effectively is, um, at the point where the aerial goes into the transceiver, usually resolves the problem. I have on occasion used the ferrite core at the other end, just as the coax exits the magnetic mount. But generally speaking, I find that uh, it's uh, at the end of the coax where it goes into the transceiver cures a problem. It's, it's really that simple. But it can be very frustrating if you're not aware of how the problems occur, occur in and how you cure the problem. So there we are. Use a line isolator, the point where the coax goes into the transceiver. Well, this is all very informative for me as a newcomer. But here is a problem that cost me money. I had a longish length of RG58 coaxial cable going to my antenna. I paid good money and replaced it with better quality coaxial cable. But I now have a higher VSWR. That cannot be right. Well, that does seem strange, doesn't it? But in actual fact, there's a good reason for that. And the good news is that uh, you haven't wasted your money. Let me explain. Coax cable, all coax cable, good or bad, has got a, an inherent loss, a natural loss irrespective of what the VSWR is. Now, cheap coax cable has got a higher loss. More expensive, better quality coax cable has got a lower loss. But that means to say that there's, loss, there's less energy lost in the signal going down the coax to the antenna. But also, there's less loss on the return VSWR coming back up the coax cable. So what it means to say is that your cheaper coax cable is actually reducing the return loss and making it appear that you've got a better VSWR. The more expensive cable doesn't absorb so much of the return loss, so therefore you appear to have a higher VSWR. In essence, what it means to say is that with the better quality cable, you're getting a more accurate reading of what the VSWR is because the VSWR at your antenna is always going to be better than at the end of the coax cable where it goes into the transceiver because some of the VSWR is masked. It's almost like having a sort of a, a vague dummy load built into your cheaper coax cable. So as you improve your coax cable, so you get nearer to the truth of what your VSWR actually is at the antenna. So, in the shack, you think, gosh, I've spent all this money on better coax cable, the VSWR's gone up. All it is doing is actually showing you closer what the real VSWR is at the antenna before it gets masked by the small loss in the coax cable. The good news is that you will actually get a little bit more radiation because there's lower loss in that coax cable, so your antenna system is going to become a little more efficient. Don't get dismayed about VSWR going up with better quality coax cable. And of course, the longer the coax cable, the, diff the greater the difference will be between cheaper and good coax cable. Well, I must say, I have learned quite a lot. I really appreciate your help. I would like to learn a bit more about antenna measurements. Is there a device that you could recommend that would help me? Well, there is a device that uh, I think... Uh, is worth considering, I would encourage uh, you to consider. And that's one of these rig expert devices. I'll turn it on here and you can see the display. You see it's quite a nice um, display. It's very portable. It means to say you can go down the garden and make measurements direct on the antenna. Now the good thing about the rig expert is that it will make an awful lot of measurements as well as your VSWR as you'd expect you get a graph or you can have a meter display showing the VSWR at a particular frequency or you can have a graphic display which will show perhaps one band or the whole spectrum 
And the good thing about the Rig Expert is they've actually calibrated it. So if you have a spectrum display, say you do measurements from I don't know, 1, 1. 1.8 megahertz to um, 30 megahertz, which covers the uh, ham radio HF bands. If you select that sort of um, range, then the Rig Expert it actually shows you the ham radio bands on that display. They're highlighted in blue. So you can actually see where the handbands are. And you can actually also um, program it so that it will check the VSWR on various handbands. You can, I think you can have five or six handbands. So you just uh, press the button and it will then scan and give you the VSWR on the popular HF bands that you've selected uh, in the menu system. The other thing about the Rig Expert is it's got an excellent manual. Now, the Rig Expert will do a lot of things other than measuring VSWR or measure reactants, which we've covered earlier in this video. Um, uh, it enables you to check coax lengths uh, without measuring it. You just plug the meter in it, it will actually measure the length of coax on a, on a drum. And uh, all, all manner of measurements that uh, relate to uh, installing and designing an antenna system. So it's a good investment. And as I said just now, it's the portability, um, and it's also very rugged. It comes with a case, waterproof case, or a showerproof case anyway. Um, and it's the portability of it, you can put it in your pocket, you can take it out in the garden, you can actually do some antenna measurements. And the good thing about that is you can actually adjust the antenna and immediately see the results on the meter without having to go back to the shack and power up the transceiver and measure VSWR, etc., etc. It's very accurate. So if you're interested in antenna measurements or design or making your own antennas. It's a good investment. And also, going back to the manual, the manual is very, very detailed and it's a good e educational system because there's nothing better than reading the manual, finding out what measurements you can make, trying that out for yourself, and you start to learn how this device will enable you to adjust your antennas very quickly and do all sorts of uh, measurements and um, uh, you know, you'll appreciate, I think, uh, how easy it can be with a device like this. So it's a good investment. It's going to last you for ages. Um, they've been going for years, rig experts. There's all sorts of models covering different ranges, different sizes, etc. Uh, the one I've got here covers, um, I forget what the lowest frequency is now, but it goes right up to the two meter ham radio band. So I uh, highly recommend it. It's a, it's a great asset. So there we are, that's another, another video covering uh, some topics which I hope you found interesting, particularly if you're a newcomer. Don't forget we've got some special deals on at the moment. Don't forget the Yesu cashback, which means to say if you're thinking about buying an HF transceiver, you can get up to £85 cashback from Yesu. Also, if you go on our site, we've got some great prices. Um, we've always got deals going on. If you check, if you check out, I think currently, there's a 5% discount across the board on our site. Um, also, we're doing package deals, or we call them bundles. Um, in actual fact, if you go onto our website and just key in the word bundles, I think you'll find all the bundle deals come up. There's things like um, free baseball cap with uh, the ASO HF transceivers, free power supplies with the, some of the ASO HF transceivers, and other deals as well. So if you're thinking of buying something, go onto our website, look it up, see what deals we've got. And um, if you want to do a part exchange, don't forget, you just pick up the phone and speak to one of our sales guys. They'd be more than happy to help you. They're always ha happy to do a deal. And uh, it might be worthwhile having the chat. Part exchange, of course, do some great part exchange deals, which will save you a lot of money. So there we are. Check our website or pick up the telephone. Either way, we'll be happy to provide you with whatever you want. And very quickly as well, we offer a 24 hour uh, delivery service. So uh, there's a lot, of, lot going for you to check on our website. In the meantime, thank you for your support on this channel. It's much appreciated. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. That simply means that we know that we're doing the right thing for you. you you're looking for new videos. And if we, if we know that, and also the comments, by the way, we, we do read all your comments. Um, that sometimes guides us as to what videos that uh, you would like to see. In the meantime, as usual, you take care, enjoy ham radio, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.
Thank you.